It's really been a busy month for 90s Brit, 90s Brit, Brit rock icons with comebacks from bands including Radiohead, Super Furry Animals and even the Stone Roses. Now the Verbs frontman Richard Ashcroft is returning with a new solo album. He's here with us on the morning. sofa this morning. Good morning. We good see morning. ourselves in your in your glasses, which is slightly off-putting yeah. <laughs> to see myself there. Yeah. I don't, think, I don't the think, think it should be off-putting. You no, should, no. Uh, you know, do you want to check your hair? <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Thanks very much. <laughs> uh, should we have a little listen? The new Just trying to work out the outfit there, Richard. Was it, it, was a, it was a polo neck and a gas mask. That's right, yeah. Nice. Thank nice you. touch. Yeah, I think it could be the future. Yeah, who knows? We might see it on the high street soon. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a, an, I can't even say the word, apocalyptic message. Does that be fair enough? Um, How would you describe it, Richard? Well, I think I'd describe it as, um, I think it's difficult to be a writer in this day and age and just completely ignore... You guys know better than anyone mm. what's going on around the world. You, you you talk about it daily. And for the period I was writing the record, the world and remains a, a bit of a tinderbox, whether it be the uprisings in the Middle East, whether it be the um, Ukraine situation, Syria. And as a writer, I like to write about the personal, but also I can't ignore the wider world. And um, as a father, I think you you become less nihilistic and you look into the future more. You, you, you think about potentially my children's children and, and the world that they're going to live in. And um, rather than drowning in anxiety and fear, I think I'm lucky that I'm, um, I'm lucky to be a musician. I'm lucky I have something, some way of expressing myself. And I think a lot of music out there, a lot of lyrics, a lot of stuff we um, hear, it doesn't seem to relate to me. It doesn't seem to mirror the world I'm living in. And now, pure escapism is fantastic. Part and parcel of the entertainment industry is to escape, but not all the time. You know, you don't want to escape to the point where you're kind of deluded about the planet we're on right now. So mm. I think it's part of my journey as a, as a writer. You know, titles like The Drugs Don't Work, Bittersweet Symphony. Bittersweet Symphony says you're a slave to money, then you die in the first line yet I can have 80,000 people smiling, singing it. So it's, it's, a, it's a very powerful art form, music, pop music, rock music, whatever you want to call it. And it's often undervalued in a way as a way of communicating. Yeah. Um, we said in the lead-in, and our media does this a lot, about the idea of uh, you having disappeared for six years. Mm. But you've been somewhere, haven't you, doing uh, something? So yeah. have, you been, have you been working, have you, have you been sort of creating stuff all the time, or did you yeah. literally stop doing I did play the. I did play some concerts, it's just that there was, they weren't heavily uh, publicised. I carried on being creative, but again, it's that concept of we live in an age where people, you know, have an anxiety attack if their phone battery's on the way out. I didn't have a phone for four years. You know, I stepped out of that to to almost step back into a time before that to see what it's like when you're not having those conversations that, to be honest, we weren't having 20 odd years ago. So we live in an age where if you've not posted something on social media in an hour, you, you potentially feel like your fame or your place and position is already dwindling. Right. So I don't judge it on what other people do. Time is an amazing gift. Time is everything. When we get older, Potentially, we often look back and think, oh, if only I'd had more time with my kids, if only I'd had more time. Now, time, I was lucky I afforded myself some time because time is it. You know, I, I understand the speed in which we can leave this, this planet and um, it was a great opportunity. Mm. I mean, you're very philosophical, aren't you? <laughs> I, I'm a little philosophical, yes. Um, Filming of that, was it, I mean, was it one, how did it work? What, was it one sequence? I know it was yeah. years and years ago. I'll you tell you a funny anecdote. My wife's mother was working at a uh, agricultural college somewhere and the, the top man there said, I don't know how you can have that guy in your family. And she said, you know, you're talking about a professor here. He said, the way he walks down the street, knocking those people over. <laughs> you know, Sometimes the line between reality and, you know, people get, people really believe that I walked down that Could street. Could you not just people ever? assumed that was what you were like yeah, normally. The process was really <laughs> uncomfortable because I wasn't, I wasn't quote unquote well known then. Right. So I was having people shouting out of doorways, he's too ugly to be in a video. You know, there was so much heat going on in the day. Um, and also at one point I got supposed retribution where I was beaten up in front of the pub, but I took that out because I thought it took away from that, the attitude. Yeah, the nonchalant. But I still felt it comprom... Even though it was very successful, I think it... For me, as a musician, I put so much work into the track 
I was a bit concerned that the visual uh, really? was almost outweighing the song. And I'm mindful of the time here, but uh, everyone thinks about the orchestral sections there. Sure. And you're you're going to be doing some some gigs, That's which right. are going to be big on the orchestra yes. stuff. Yes, it's great for me to announce that on December the seventh at Liverpool Arena, and on December the 9th at the London O2, I'm going to be performing for the first time since I actually performed with the BBC Orchestra a number of years ago with mm. the full orchestra. Um, back in my songs, you're going to hear all the classics from Lucky Man, Bit Sweet, Drugs Don't Work, Sonnet, through my solo career, Song for the Lovers, and on. And it should be an extravag extravaganza. Um, and just very briefly, you're a Man U fan. You used to park, did you, where, where we're sitting now? So this not quite be, there, but... This would be where we took the never-ending coach. I've said it before, but yeah. I used to think that it took five hours to get to Manchester from Wigan because the coach <laughs> seemed to take this very <laughs> unusual route. We used to pick people up all through the northwest, and then we'd finally park near the rail lines, just, just here, yeah, so... It's changed here a lot. And Have you got a thought got... on the new uh, new managing arrangements? Yeah, I've got a thought on it. I think uh, you know I've got great respect for Jose. He's, he's a he's a very very successful manager. But um, I always remain that Manchester United as a club and as a spirit is bigger than anyone. You know, and that's what Sir Alex was great at impressing on people. Nobody's personality yes. is bigger than this club. So. You know, as long as Jose is aware of that, which I'm sure he is, then uh, I think it's going to be a successful relationship. Lovely to see you. I'm, I'm sure. I'm, I'm really concerned that people have seen the mess behind the desk with your glasses on as well. But you <laughs> oh, don't, don't look down there. Don't look down there. She's worried about the reflection. I see. <laughs> it's, all, it's all loose mess. You it's have a banana. Got, they have got such a stash down there. I'm telling you now. <laughs> what a stash! I'm sure people will appreciate the view. Original album. Thank you very much. It's, it's called These People. Thanks Over to meet you. Cheers. So we're going.